Young female came with headache, vomiting, and reduced response. What will be your differential diagnosis? Uh, uh, the patient is having percentage headache, vomiting, and decreased response. Mm. And there is a history of surgery on the mm. So, either it can be a meningitis due mm. to the post surgery complication, or it can be a bleed due to the post surgery, mm. or it can be any uh, electrolyte imbalances like hypoglycemia. Importance of checking sugar in this patient. The patient presented with a uh, history of decreased response. Uh, so, uh, probably in the post surgery phase also. Uh, so, uh, one of the most common reasons for uh, decreased response in BP is hypoglycemia. This patient very unlikely, but uh, otherwise, as a whole, uh, in general, uh, hypoglycemia should be ruled out. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, and this patient, uh, you told about the airway breathing circulation and all. What is Cushing's triad? Uh, Cushing's triad is uh, uh, hypertension, mm. uh, bradycardia, mm. and uh, 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 Okay. Uh, there will be bradycardia, hypertension, and irregular respiration. Okay. That will be usually seen in raised ICP when the patient starts coning. Okay. So this patient A V B G uh, why did you uh, do a VBG for this patient? So before starting correction, we need to send the serum osmolarity, urine osmolarity, urine sodium. Okay. Uh, how do we correct hyponatremia? Uh, uh, All patients will you target it or uh, depending on the condition? Uh, depending on the condition. But ideally, if we correct more than eight uh, or accuracy correct. So, in acute uh, hyponatremia, we can correct up to 8 to 12 milliequivalents per day. And in chronic, we can correct up to 6. Okay. So, uh, if we correct or correct that, it, a patient can go for central uh, pondine myelolysis. Okay. Or peripheral pondine myelolysis. Peripheral myelolysis. Okay. So, the formula was that uh, our desired uh, sodium target minus the lab sodium. Zero point five. Since the patient is a uh, woman, uh, the constant zero point five into the men zero point six into the ideal body weight. So our target was initially it was one not six. So eight millimolar. So it is around one forty minus one not six. So 
114 is the target for the 24 hours. Okay. And 0.5 is 3% is required uh, uh, to be started and it should be continued for 24 hours to correct a sodium and reach up to 1 4. Okay. So, should we wait for the next 24 hours for the next sodium? Why we are checking every 6th hourly? Uh, power correction can lead to uh, myelinitis Okay. So, uh, in order to prevent that, we should check. And if at all the patient is um, reaching, uh, so you take the first value as 106 and the next value came as 120. What will you do? Uh, then we will uh, stop the uh, uh, time. Yeah. For how many times? But the sensorum is still somewhat like that. So GCS is around 14 by 15. When will you restart the 3% selling? So, first sodium was 106, we started a 3% saline correction, sodium became 120 after 6 hours, then we will have to, uh, but sensorum is still low, so we will have to wait for the next 24 hours, only after 24 hours, we will have plan on restarting the 3% saline if at all the sensorum is not improved. So, if we stop 3% saline at 2 am, next day after 24 hours, next day 2 am only, we will be planning to start 3% saline if at all required. What kind of meningitis will you suspect in this patient? For surgery? Bacteria. Uh, uh, bacteria, mostly gram positive meningitis like Staphylococcus aureus. Why did you do this drug history for this patient? Broadly, uh, drug-induced hypo, um, uh, hyponatremia will be similar, especially SADH will be seen in um, diuretics, especially thiazide diuretics, it will be there. Then, anti-epic drugs. Uh, then, there will be antidepressant drugs. Then, some antipsychotic drugs, it will be there. And, in case of some chemotherapy drugs like vincristin, vimblastin, cyclophosphamide, these drugs, there can be SADH, which will be there. Okay, so that drug history is also important. Was the patient taking anything? Why this uh, general examination is important in a hyponatremia patient, not this patient, otherwise. So, this patient we are seeing. Mm. Explanation: The patient was sponsored but not oriented. Usually, before MC, 
people bilateral prima medullar reaction to light the patient was having a right gene sequence fine tune in the patient to the medullary patient was not oriented to do for the examination other systems respiratory system normal vascular response or arrhythmia previous test one is with no hormone gat soft normal and normal Uh, coming to the investigation, uh, the serum osmolality of the patient uh, came around 240, and the urine sodium of uh, 78 milligrams per liter. Uh, the RFP the LFP. So you saw, so you saw the sodium uh, 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 to be 106. Okay. Uh, then what? Uh, so before starting three percent saline, what all did you send? Serum osmolality, urine osmolality, and urine sodium osmolality. Okay. What is the importance of serum osmolality? Correction factor is 1.6 um, sodium. We should 1.6 milliequivalents. We should add if the sugar is coming less than 400, more than 400. For every 100, we will have to increase 4. Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, so we have already discussed about the hyper uh, volemic hyponatremia. So that is like conditions like fluid overload, conditions like cirrhosis, cardiac failure, renal failure, and all. Uh, what about this? Uh, hypovolemic hyponatremia is basically due to uh, dehydration. Mm. Uh, there is loss of volume, that is like diarrhea, uh, vomiting, and renal loss and also insufficiency are the most common causes of hypovolemic hyponatremia. Uh, coming to hemovolemic hyponatremia, <coughs> it can be due to uh, thyroid dysfunction, uh, hyperthyroidism, and uh, the most common is lipidemia. So this patient's serum osmolarity was 240. So that is low. Okay. So patient is having true hyponatremia. Then what was the next investigation? The urine sodium was also on the higher side. Okay. Maybe. What is the cutoff for urine sodium? Uh, 14. Okay. Maybe 14. Maybe 14. Okay. Maybe 14. 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 Maybe 
So to diagnose uh, SADH, we need a normal liver function, renal function and normal adrenal function. So, okay. Uh, sorry, thyroid function, thyroid function, renal function, <coughs> adrenal function should be there. Then only we can tell this patient is having SADH. So this female is having hyponatremia and most probably the cause is SADH. Okay. What did you treat her? Uh, we started the patient on initially triposylate time. Mm. Uh, the initial sodium was one of six. And after six hours, we again did the sodium, but it came out to be uh, one of eight only. Uh, then, uh, in uh, at that time, we did the serum osmolality, urine sodium, and urine osmolality. So, our diagnosis of uh, morning fever of SIADH. Uh, we told this patient is having SIADH. What might be the cause for SIADH? Uh, the post surgery. So, she is not on any drugs or anything. SIADH, multiple things are there post surgery. Post surgery, SADH, and infection. Uh, infection. Is she having any infection? No, CBC is here. Everything was normal. Then what can be the other cause? Uh, she is not on any drugs. Then post surgery complication. Then she is having a tumor. If it is a malignant tumor, then, then there is a chance of SADH. Then any neurosurgical procedure or any CNS disease can cause. SADH. So, this much things are there. So, she is on for SADH. Okay. Uh, then the sodium was, uh, MC sodium was 106 uh, and SADH was also our most probable diagnosis. So, we started the patient on Tolvaptan. Okay. Uh, at, so, uh, initially, will you start Tolvaptan? No, ma'am. So, we uh, in the patient is not including on Tolvaptan saline and our diagnosis. First, if you if we, if we get a patient with um, SADH, first what will you do? Uh, fluid restriction. So SADH first point is fluid restriction. Then, oh, so first we did fluid restriction. Restriction then. Improving with what? Second, we can give diuretics because if, uh, SADH is actually uh, uh, patient's body, even though we call it as uvolemic, patient's body will be having extra water. So, we can give diuretics, remove the water and then sodium can be normal. So, second, we should, first we should restrict the fluid. Second, we can give diuretics. Then, if not improving, we can give 3% saline. But since this patient's sensorium was very low, we don't want her to throw seizure or anything because of hyponatremia. So, we gave 3% saline. And uh, her repeat sodium, what was it? 108. What was the next sodium? Uh, after the starting of sodium came to Okay. So, uh, this patient, uh, when will you start? Uh, if, if the sodium is not improving, even after 24 hours, then we can plan on starting on Tolvaptan. Or what was the dose of Tolvaptan given? So, so what is the mechanism of action of Tolvaptan? Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, 15 mg OD, what is the maximum dose we can give? We can give up 60 mg once in a day dose can be given. And uh, did the patient improve? So, uh, suppose this patient, we have a 22 year old female without any neurosurgical procedure, without any other uh, problems. This patient is coming with hyponatremia. Uh, there is a, suppose this patient is having a history of outside food intake and patient is having uh, some uh, multiple, patient had multiple episodes of vomiting. Okay. And she presented to ER with generalized weakness and all. We took a uh, routine investigation, we were planning her for admission we found her sodium to be low. Mostly we are su suspecting relational hyponatremia. How will you correct that? Depletional hyponatremia. Normal we need In depletional hyponatremia, we need to correct what all? We need to, patient is in hyponatremia because of hypovolemia. Mm -hmm. hypovolemia. So, we need to correct the volume and then we can give supplementary sodium. Should we give 3% saline? Normal saline can be given. And dietary supplementation, how will you give? 
how will you give added salts to the patient uh, actually uh, one uh, spoon of uh, salt contains around 6 one teaspoon of ah uh, salt contains 6 uh, gram. gram of salt mm. a tablespoon contains 18 gram of salt so okay. the patient is stable taken normally we can supplement accordingly okay so what how much does 1 gram contain how much milliequivalent One gram of salt contains seventeen point one milliequivalents of sodium. So, along with the dietary supplement, dietary sodium, we will have to add extra salt. How will you give extra salt to the patient? In feeds, we can give the normal salt which is required for that day. Extra salt, how will you give? You can keep, give it in capsules, like salt capsule, we like vitamin capsules, vitamin capsules are there. Now you can remove the contents inside that, and you can add salt in that, and that can be given to the patient. Okay. How is the patient now? So can you sum up? So we had a 22-year-old female patient which came to ER complaints of reduced response. So uh, we ruled out hyponet uh, hypoglycemia. We found that this patient is having hyponatremia. Uh, we were suspecting uh, in terms of any other infection or any bleed, post-surgical complications that all were ruled out. And then.